Hello and welcome to Cheshire Audio. Now, this is going to be an instructional video, uh, partly because I've not done one for a while, partly because I had a brilliant idea of one to do and I've been trying to make it work. Um, it's a very, there's a very easy test for what we're going to talk about and I've been trying to create an experiment and can I make it work? Can I find a way of doing it that doesn't infringe music, copyright? I can't. So what I'm going to have to do is talk it through, basically. Um, firstly, don't want to go back to the basics with this. What I'm going to talk about is um, checking when these speakers are in phase. And I'm not talking about sort of phase further back in the system, you know, think whether things are wired the right way around or anything like that. We're talking from amplifier to speakers, so your speaker cables, whether they're actually connected correctly. Um, weirdly, with speaker cables, it's not that important, really, as long as you, you know, one channel goes to one speaker, the other channel goes to the other speaker. If you get it th them back to front, it still works. What, where there's a problem is if you've got one correctly configured, so positive to positive, negative to negative, and the other one isn't, it's positive to negative, negative to positive, it will still work, it will sound pr probably quite good actually, still, but it's not right. At best people notice that there's just something not quite right about the sound of the system, and at worst it can actually hurt your ears. I've, I'm really susceptible to it and there's a colleague of mine who used to work with at Brady's, Stephen, who was very, very, very susceptible to it. Um, so much so I can walk into a room and if the system's wide out of phase it's almost like, take, it's like, oh, it really gets you because it, it hurts almost. It's, it's a re really odd effect you get from it. Um, but then I've had cust customers who've been sort of saying there's something not quite right with my system, can't figure it out. and. When we've got down to the bottom of it, it's been basically the speakers have been out of phase. The, when you're connecting a system up, there's there's quite a few pointers for this. I mean, it troubles it. it can, that, th this can get quite confusing. On the back of your amplifier, you will have terminals which are, are left and right, and left channel will be a positive and a negative. Positive is always red. Negative can be various things. I've seen it as white. I've seen it as as black. Um, uh, I think even there's. Was it blue and yellow I've seen occasionally as well, which is a bit odd, but generally, generally red, black, both channels. Speaker's the same. Um, so what you would do is you take your cable, positive to positive, negative to negative. Where it gets a little bit confusing is sometimes the way speaker cable is labelled is a bit vague. Um, I'll put some pictures up. I mean, there's, um, I've got Nordos cables downstairs which are red-green, but very, very obviously red and green. Always take, you always take the red as positive. Um, funnily enough, just, just to confuse you even more on this one, um, as, long as, as long as you choose a colour to be positive and follow that through with the speakers, so if you decided red was negative, as long as it was negative at every end, it wouldn't really matter, but it's just good practice to have red as positive, just, just so, that's, that's kind of the standard really. Um, say so I've got red green. I'll put a picture up here. Red green, uh, Nordos. That's red dawn. I think I've got. That's got red green on it. Uh, the green signifies the fact it's a demonstration set. But anyway, um, I've also got red black on um, another Nordos. I think that's. I'll put a picture up here as well. Um, I think that's on um, white lightning. Atlas cables is not as easy to tell. The the plug. The plugs are actually written on, one's written on in white, the other one is written on in red, so you have to sort of squint at it. I've taken a picture of it, whether or not, I'll put that up here, whether or not you can see whether the, which is which. You have to sort of actually really come in close to it. Some cables, I've noticed, if the, if the plugs aren't, um, aren't labelled, you have to unscrew the plug and have a look inside, and quite often the inner, the inner core of the, the cable itself will be red or white or red or black. So you can actually see with it from the inner core whether it's a positive or not. Normally with cables like that there'll be some other indication, some, quite often they'll be writing down, if it's a two core cable, they'll be writing down the positive core, and not on the negative core. Um, one that's a little bit confusing is, I've got QED79 strand on the reel downstairs, now that is a double core cable but it's written on both, don't know why. Uh, put a picture up here. The way to tell, tell with things like that is if you actually run your fingers around the cable Quite often with two core cables, this, it, it's fa this is fairly standard. Uh, one of the one of the cores will be fl flat round, and the other the other core will have a little ridge on it. And generally, you take the ridge to be positive. So there you go. So that's that's all the, the possibilities on that. Now, the, a good test for this. It's not always easy to achieve this. I mean, I had a customer. 
I think it was a couple of years ago, it, over, over about a year, I think, he'd, I think he'd moved his system or moved house, or for some reason he'd moved his setup. And he kept ringing me and saying, there's something not right with the system. I, mean, I can't get it to sound like it used to sound. And we'd been through all sorts. First thing I said to him was, just check everything's in phase. Yeah, yeah, yeah. went around to talk, yeah, everything's in phase. Um, and it went on and on, moved stuff around in the room, try this, try that, try damping a wall, thought it was a room effect. Went through all sorts of different things. And one day I was, went out to his house for something else, completely, completely unrelated. Walked through the door and the system was playing and straight away it's like, whoa, that's out of phase. When we actually investigated the cabling, one of them had been labelled wrong from the factory. Um, never seen that before at all. It, it had, it had um, cold welded plugs on, to, on the end of the cables and they, they were reversed. Um, but yeah, I mean, he just knew there was, like I said, he just knew there was something a, a bit strange going on. What tends to happen when things are out of phase is, um, because um, phasing of speakers, if you've got, say, left, left speaker, right speaker, if they're both in phase with each other, they both move together like this. If one's out of phase, you get that sort of movement. So, but the, both are doing the, uh, are recreating the signal, but they're doing it in a different way. So instead of when left moves forward, right will move back. So you do get, you do get the sound, but what tends to happen is because one is doing the complete opposite of the other, you get cancellations. So where the sound overlaps between the speakers, you'll tend to find things that are on both channels as well. Both channels and the things that but yeah, basically <laughs> just said the same thing in a different way. Things that are common to both channels tend to get can cancelled out, and things that are only in the left or only in the right tend to be left alone. So you get this, you tend to get a quite a distant sounding s sound, a, a, a distant sound with a big sort of ethereal sort of stereo image going on. Vocals seem a bit distant, the bass seems odd and almost not there. Um, sometimes it's not quite as severe as that, so sometimes down to room acoustics and reflections in the room it's not as bad as it can be, but in a worst case scenario with those sorts of things, it can sound, to me it just sounds awful and it hurts my ears. Now, yeah, I walked in, that was a, cured it straight away, all of a sudden he loves his system again. Um, now the test for this, which like I said, isn't always that easy to achieve, is to get your speakers out into the room, connected up, being very careful not to let anything sort of disconnect itself while you're moving them around. And you put your speakers face to face, leave, leaving about a half inch gap. Um, so they're basically firing into each other. Now, if they're in phase with each other, as you push them together, the sound, the sound should, the volume should increase quite considerably. And if you swap, disconnect, you know, switch off, whatever, put one to out of phase, you'll find as you move them together, the sound goes very, very quiet, almost disappears entirely, actually, because what the drivers, instead of doing this and pushing, sort of doubling up the air pressure, they're doing this and cancelling each other out. And that is the, that is the best test for phasing. It's, what it doesn't really help with is if you've got um, an internal problem with the speaker and one of the drivers is out of phase, it's, it's, that's very difficult to actually hear, actually. The treble units are out of phase, but the bass units are in phase. It sounds a bit odd, but it doesn't, it's very difficult to actually isolate that, really. You almost have to investigate, you know, take them apart and investigate, which I wouldn't recommend. Um, so, yeah, that's it. That's what I was trying to do. But, I, yeah, I was trying to play a section of music that was short enough not to, not to infringe YouTube copyright. But, it, yeah, it wasn't long enough. And then, well, anyway, it was, yeah. I even tried... Um, uh, uh, I had a, an album with a, a jump on it, trying to where it was jumping. It wasn't really jumping where the because it tends to be more obvious with bass. Actually, if you put, when you put the speakers together, if you put something which has got quite quite prominent bass on the recording, it's really obvious then. So anyway, so no, my experiment did it. I didn't could get it to work. So um, hopefully, my description of helps. Um, if you've got any more questions about this, just just ring me at the shop really. But gener generally. If everything's wired, I should be, and you've got everything, it, it'll be correct. But if you've got any questions about the labelling of the speaker cable, or there's just something a bit wrong, and you just want to just be sure, just speakers together. And I know if you some speakers, if you've got a sort of 50 kilo pair of um, whatever, sort of um, Qdos Titans or something like that, it's not an easy job particularly. But um, and yeah, probably find, <laughs> probably find some other way to do it. So anyway, 
Um, I think that's it for that part of the video. Um, yeah, that's it really. I've not done as many videos this week as I was hoping because I'd forgotten it's a short week because obviously uh, Good Friday and then we've got, so I'm going to be closed over Easter till Wednesday. I'm taking Tuesday because I always feel cheated out of my, my normal Monday when it's a bank holiday, so I, t I tend to take the Tuesday and come back on Wednesday. Um, we are actually going away, I think. I forget where. Where are we going? North, uh, South Wales. Yeah, so I went to North Wales yesterday and it was torrential rain. Well, not yesterday, day before yesterday. Torrential rain. Lovely here. Torrential rain in white. It's no, I suppose it's normal. Um, so anyway, yeah. Um, that's it, I think. I was just trying to... I, I had a feeling there was something I was going to talk about on this that was, was relevant. No, there isn't. Okay. <laughs> that's it for now. I'll see you in a future video. Don't forget to subscribe and like. Um, and if you want to buy me a coffee, if this has been helpful and solved all your problems, then uh, you can go to the buy me a coffee link on the main page and donate through there to my, need, my, my coffee need. <laughs> okay, see you soon.